right, well, <laughs> 15 seconds after I talked, uh, I turned the uh, camera off. That's what happened. I was trying to trying to sand it, and the stress here was just too much. Broke it, broke it off of there. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, you know what? Simple enough. I'll go back, and I will have a do-over. All right, uh, here's the uh, do-over. And what I did was I grabbed some cherry. And uh, what you see here in between the bits of cherry are a couple of pieces of pot oak that I found in my hardwood supplier scrap bin. It was already that thick, so it was a perfect thing to uh, perfect thing to use. So anyway, what I did was I I went ahead, glued that up, and then I uh, resawed it and sanded it down to five eighths of an inch thick. And then let's see if you can see it here. Yeah. Uh, I went ahead and drew the uh, yeah drew the pencil lines that you see on there, and that's going to be the guides for my scroll sawing. Uh, now the overall finished product length is going to be seven and three inches wide, or excuse me, long, long uh, versus six inches wide. So I went ahead and that's what the outside line dimensions are. And then one quarter inch in from that, I put in the first ring that I'm going to have to cut out. So I put my, uh, I actually left it slightly bigger, maybe a sixteenth of an inch bigger on this end. And that's where I'm going to drill my starter hole next time. So hopefully I'll, I will avoid, <laughs> uh, I'll avoid the same problem I had last time. Now, uh, uh, you can also see that I have, there we go. I have covered this with packing tape, and that's going to lubricate the scroll saw blade, although it's also going through thinner material. So hopefully we will not have the amount of burning that I had last time. So with that, the next thing to do is go out and uh, get up the scroll saw. So, Okay, uh, table saw is tilted to 23 degrees, and fresh blade in there. Packing tape, let's uh, see how it goes. Alrighty, uh, that came out pretty good. Look at that. Uh, I don't think there's any burning on there. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> having a well, having a thinner workpiece and the tape on there, I think, really made a difference. So, I gotta go drill a hole. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, yeah, you can see the you can see the uh, entry hole there. I had to drill in there, and I used my smallest bit. It's almost it's almost too small for the saw blade. To fit in here but uh i did make it work so uh anyway uh yeah cut the next ring and i'll show you the next step Inside for the next step. <sighs> like the hat. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's the next step. And first thing I got to do, I've already taken it off of this, but I got to peel the tape off of this. So, ooh, look at that. Might have an, might have an idea for a channel specialty here. 
So anyway, tapes off of here. And uh, what I have to do is I have to make, I have to draw out the next ring on this piece. So for that, I use this as a guide. Now, uh, if you saw the last video, you saw how, I pro how much of a problem I had with the, with the uh, drill hole. Well, here's a little tiny one, and it's looking pretty good. So anyway, uh, I know my other drill hole is right here. So these are lined up the way I want them lined up. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to get this ring that I just cut out lined up as best I can on the base piece. And I'm just going to hold it in place with my hand. And now go around. And there we go. Just like that. So I'm going to make my drill hole entry at the slightly wider end here. That way, again, I run into less of a problem of, uh, of having, having too narrow of a piece. And to be honest, I'm a little concerned that this right here is too narrow. And let me do a very quick measurement on it. Yeah, it's it's just a hair under a quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to I'm just going to after I turn the camera off, I'm just going to go ahead and scribe the line, scribe the line a little shallower in there, or well, you get the idea. That way, I get a, I get a wider piece down here at this end. So uh, anyway, with that, I will uh, come back and I'll show you how it looks. So talking a bit. Almost forgot to mention, uh, I go went ahead and put some packing tape around the outside again to lubricate that blade. So. All right, be right back. You know, so now I am wondering if there's a YouTube channel where all they do is peel tape off of things, or maybe like you know dry glue off pans or something like that. Because <laughs> I don't know, oddly, you know, some kind of oddly satisfying thing. Uh, so anyway, I've got all three of my rings cut out, and I am pretty pretty pleased with how they came out. I had a couple, I had one a little weird spot happen on, on uh, one of them where the blade just slipped. I don't know, I don't know if I had it tightened up enough or not, but anyway, uh, you can see, hey, enough for now, please. <laughs> you always do that when I'm trying to talk. So anyway, uh, or is that confirmation bias? Anyway, uh, as you can see here, I got three nice looking rings here. Uh, on the inside, they're looking pretty good. Although again, I have I have a little weird little divot right here, and I have a weird little divot right here, which is going to give me some grief when I sand it. But it's nowhere near as bad as the bad as the one on the previous attempt. So, uh, with that, the next step is to glue these three rings up, and then go out and do a little. Well, after the glue does its thing, go out and do a little sanding. So, be right back. All right. Uh, so far, so good. I actually went in and hand sanded this with some 60 grit paper. And yeah, I've got it nicely evened out in there. I'm going to need to go, of course, I'm going to need to go back in and sand it with some uh, 150 to start and then some 220 just to smooth it out a little bit. But, uh, yeah, uh, it, it took a little work, but uh, yeah, this this doing it by hand work, work yeah, doing it by hand went really well, and I think uh, a lot of that goes to how careful I was about lining up the rings in the first place. Now the outside, on the other hand, you can see uh, I do have some stagger, but uh, even when I finish sanding this down, it's going to there should be plenty of. Uh, uh, plenty of uh, wood left. The only problem, again, is going to be right there. And I'm not sure what happened. The saw blade just kind of jumped and snagged. And, well, yeah. So I'm going to end up taking a lot of uh, a lot of material off right here. And I'm hoping I'm not going to have to have another do-over. We will see. So, anyway. Uh, I would go out and sand, do some sanding right now. Except it's raining. Uh, it's that time of year here in Arizona, so yeah, uh, I'll come back when that 
next time. Uh, got it glued up and it's looking pretty good. So, time to sand. looks pretty it's pretty good I'm gonna have to go back and do some hand sanding now to uh, uh, clean up these uh, clean up these curves and just to touch up a few of the well, not as smooth as I'd like them spots so but you know what? that's another day so be back to the next step all right uh, <laughs> morning don't please don't mind the hair um, anyway it is time to put a finish on this and well since I'm gloving up that means I'm working with something I don't want to get on my hands and in this particular case it is going to be the uh, the Danish oil it's not really toxic but it doesn't come off easily and that really you know it just bothers me a little bit so anyway if I can get this get this thing open so yeah there we go so uh, I like the Danish oil because it gives the wood a really rich finish and it's got a secondary benefit in that if I'm sitting here and I'm working on it and I end up uh, finding a spot where I didn't get all the glue off or there's a flaw in my sanding or something like that then it's really really easy for me to go back and just let the oil cure for a couple of days then go back and sand over that spot touch it up and then I can just rub the oil right into it and it won't hurt anything at all it won't hurt the rest of the surrounding finish if I was working with with if I was working with shellac or lacquer or something like that then it might end up you might end up seeing the spot depending on how big it is or how prominent it is so Danish oil Again, uh, it's it's a good, easy finish, although, like I said, it's kind of messy, and you probably want to wear gloves. So, anyway, very simple. I've done this before, but I'll just show you show you the, the process again. Just pour a little bit of oil directly on. You don't need a lot. And then I'm using some 800 grit sandpaper here, and you want to use a really, really fine, wet-dry grit. And all I'm doing is I'm using the sandpaper to rub the oil into the wood and there's the side there's the end grain and there's what the bottom is going to look like so I I think it's looking think it's looking really good so while I'm rubbing this in I'll tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing or what I did uh, I finished I finished up on the belt sander obviously to just do the the main contouring and I went back and I hand sanded a bit with some uh, some 150 grit and some then some 220 grit just again to finish <laughs> finish things up make a uh, make them uh, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for uh, even everything out take off take off the worst of the sanding marks take uh, just you know just touch up all the little spots on there and that uh, that did the job. And again, if I need to, at this point, I can go back and I can sand down a little further. Now, uh, one other thing that I did was I took that 220 paper and I just ran it along the bottom edge of the bowl here, just to just to remove the sharp edge. And I'm not good. I didn't do it along the top edge right here. That's going to get taken care of today when I'm using this 600 grit. So. 
just going to go around and I'm just going to rub the, uh, again, I'm just going to rub, use the sandpaper to rub the oil into the wood. And what this does, if you haven't seen it before, is it creates some very, very fine sanding dust and creates a, uh, a slurry of Danish oil and sanding dust. And that works into the pores and the gaps, little tiny gaps in the wood and lets it, uh, uh, lets this come out to be a very, very smooth finish. Uh, it, it looks good, it feels good, however it doesn't smell good. <laughs> Uh, uh, once you do this, you're going to need to find a very, very well ventilated area. If you can set up a little dust house or something outside, uh, or in a or in a garage where you can leave this to cure for a couple of days, that's probably the best way to go about it. So, and you can see already just what's going on with that. And I'm just going to keep rubbing this, and it is, and there's the inside. So you can, yeah, a little splash on there. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just keep rubbing it in, rubbing it in, and at a certain point, just going to grab a, just going to grab a paper towel or a rag, and wipe any excess oil off of the bowl. Now you do want to be careful because Danish oil is a little on the volatile side. <laughs> Uh, if you're using a rag or paper towels or something to to wipe up excess oil, make sure that you that you put those someplace where they can breathe after you've used them. Because a rag soaked in Danish oil, if it's kept in a dark, or excuse me, in an enclosed area, can spontaneously combust. So do keep that in mind. However, if you hang it up in a well ventilated area you're going to be fine. So anyway, I got a few more minutes of just, you know, sitting here rubbing and wiping and everything. And I will come back and I will show you the finished product here in a little while. So, uh, but right now, just going to, just going to keep doing what you see me doing. And it's, it is a bit of a process, but you do get, like I said, you do get a beautiful finish. So, so anyway, uh, with that, I will come back in just a few. switched up my sanding paper. I was using a, a, actually the sanding disc instead of the uh, 600. But what happened was I found a spot right here where there was a little bit of glue mark or maybe a high spot on on one side or something and I could I could see a difference in how it uh, uh, how the wood looked. So and again that's the great thing about a Danish oil finish. Uh, I went ahead sanded it down right there and well for one you can barely you, you can kind of see a light spot where the where I, I did do the sanding but at this point I'm just gonna put a little more oil back in the bowl and rub it right back in rub it in with some of the 800 grit and it's not gonna need a lot of oil just a, f a few drops you know maybe an eighth of a teaspoon that I'm talking about here and now I'm just gonna rub it in for a few minutes and actually, after doing that, just for a few seconds, I don't know how well you can see it because of the light and everything, but uh, yeah, the, where I where I just where I just sanded has literally has literally disappeared. So I'm just gonna, I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna rub it here for a moment. That'll help even out the finish and everything. But uh, but that is the wonderful thing 
about doing a hand rub oil finish is that those flaws as you spot them can be cleaned up pretty easily and again if I come back in a couple of days and I spot another flaw buff it out with some sandpaper and then just rub a little bit more oil in that's all that's all that has to be done so so anyway uh, like I said here in a moment I will give you a look at the final product under some much better light <laughs> Okay, here it is, and it's looking pretty good. That's what the Danish oil finish can do for you there, and you get very, very quick results when with the Danish oil. You can see what your end result is going to be almost immediately. It's just, uh, it, it, it is an easy finish to apply, although it is a bit tedious, though. So anyway, uh, the, the Podowick strips are really popping out, and the Cherry is looking... Elegant, I guess, would be the word I'm looking for, and I it's I think it's just going to look better as as this uh, as this bowl ages. Cherry will darken up and get a richer uh, reddish brown appearance as it as it uh, as it ages. So I think this is going to look very very good later on. And I don't know if I'm going to need to apply some more oil, Danish oil at least. But uh, later on. Uh, all I'm going to need to do to keep this looking good is just rub a little lemon oil into it every now and then, or mineral oil maybe. Uh, there, you know, there's a couple of interesting spots on here. There's that little spot right there, and on the outside there's a couple of little marks, but those are just natural wood, uh, natural spots from the wood itself. And that's one of the things I like about woodworking. You get those, you get those spots that, well, you know, those flaws that make the wood look good in my opinion, for what that's worth. So, but anyway, uh, that's it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was useful. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit all this together and figure out what my next project is going to be. So I guess I will talk to you later. Bye.